Hey class, Adam Ward here. Uh, I want to talk with you today about how to design a constant rate injection for our stream solute tracer studies. All right, so conceptually, a constant rate injection um, is going to work something like this. We'll have an upstream location to collect background observations. So in other words, a point that we can monitor through time that will never be impacted by our tracer. Uh, downstream from that location, we will have a large reservoir of injectate mixed, typically in a bucket or a trash can. Uh, we'll use a pump depicted here in purple to inject that tracer into the stream. So our injectate is, our high, is a high concentration tracer and we'll have dissolved it in stream water. So we're not bringing that all from the lab, we're bringing just the tracer to the field site with us and we're dissolving it in water from the field site. So the background concentrations that we measure upstream match the pre-tracer concentration in our reservoir. Our pump uh, is gonna require us to have a pump that can produce a constant flow rate of water. Um, often a peristaltic pump is used, but anything will do. Um, and we'll need to have a power supply for that pump, most typically a 12 volt battery. After we start to inject our tracer into the stream, we'll have a mixing length, so it can mix laterally and vertically. And we'll have loggers at the up and downstream ends of our study reach, uh, depicted here with the orange X's. Our study reach length will be the distance between those two loggers, shown here in gray. Now, what we're shooting for is an injection that is as constant in time as we can possibly produce. So on the top set of axes, um, what you're seeing in that dashed red line is what I would hope to see at the upstream most logger. Um, an injection where there was no tracer, it instantly comes to a constant mass rate being injected into the stream and when we stop our injection, we get an immediate um, return to background conditions. At the downstream end, the profile we expect to see is shown here in orange, where the leading edge sort of rises slowly like we've seen in slug injections. Um, at our plateau, uh, I expect that we probably won't achieve a perfect plateau in the stream. It is often the case that that plateau slowly creeps up through the course of the injection. And that's happening because more and more flow paths are now returning to the stream with tracer. And so that window of detection is getting longer and longer and longer in time as the injection goes on. And then after we shut off the injection pump, we get that same characteristic tailing back to background. Now, the other point to make on a constant rate injection, um, where I've written spatial profile and shown these green X's, um, during plateau, so during this time that I've circled in pink, um, it's quite typical to work your way from the downstream to the upstream end of the study reach and actually collect a spatial profile um, as well as having that time series at each logger. Right, we want to work our way from downstream to upstream so we don't disturb the sites that we are about to sample. Um, and we want to do that during the plateau, so concentrations are as constant in time as they can be. Now, how do we know what to inject? Um, the strategy here is going to be to use an end member mixing calculation. And I'll walk you through this. Um, so we're going to use Qs to represent volumetric discharge rates and Cs to represent concentrations and units of mass per cubic volume or per cubic length. Now in this setup, Q times C gives us a mass rate. So actually a mass per time that we would be injecting or that would be flowing into or out of our study reach. So we can picture that from the upstream end in blue, we have a QS and a CS to represent the stream. The injection shown in red, I'm using a subscript I to denote injection. And immediately downstream of our injection, after that mixing length, will you have a subscript D to represent downstream. Now, what we're actually doing um, with end member mixing is using a control volume approach where we choose a location in space, um, as I've used the dashed orange line to indicate here, and 
we apply a mass balance to this. So the mass rate flowing in must equal the mass rate flowing out. Now for water, we know that the flow downstream should equal the flow upstream in blue plus the flow that we inject in red. And for concentration, uh, this is satisfied by setting those mass rates equal to one another. Now, the idea here is for your site, um, the plateau concentration that you will achieve, C, D, so that's the plateau concentration at the upstream end of the study reach, can be calculated. Right? So we can know what is the concentration of our injectate in the reservoir, what is the flow rate that we will inject, and the upstream or background conditions we will have measured. And so we can use this end member mixing approach to plan what is the injection that, or what is the plateau concentration that our injection will yield in the stream. Now, if the only thing we had to deal with was that, we might, uh, life wouldn't be too hard, but constant rate injections have several additional complexities. Um, one of them is the solubility limit of your tracer. And so in the most optimal world, you will have one reservoir that will contain enough liquid and enough tracer mass that you can inject from it throughout the course of the injection. But this is not always the case. Um, we need to watch out for settling of our tracer in the reservoir or a precipitate forming. We need to watch out for other reactions occurring in the reservoir, um, things like photolysis. And we also need to think about the maximum concentration we can achieve in the reservoir. So just because we want a certain amount of tracer mass doesn't mean that it can actually be dissolved. Um, further complicating matters, we don't have access to an infinite number of pumps with perfect flow rates. We have the equipment that we have. And so the higher concentration we have in the reservoir, that lets us use a smaller pump, which will use less power if you're having to carry batteries into the field to power this, and it will make your injection rate smaller. So things to think about. Solubility is not infinite. Um, so there is a limit to how much of any given tracer can be dissolved in a given volume of water. Field solubility will not be the same as the solubility that you can look up. So for a common compound, uh, sodium chloride, for example, we can look up a theoretical maximum amount that we can dissolve in water. Um, however, in the field, you won't control the temperature, and more importantly, you won't control the background con conductivity or the background um, concentration of dissolved solids in the system. Um, finally, those lookup values are often for a, um, a continuously stirred tank. In other words, it's continuing to be agitated so precipitates don't form. None of those conditions will be true in the field. So what, whatever you look up in a table, my own personal rule is that I assume about 50% of that is actually going to be the practical solubility in the field. So it will never be greater than what you can look up. It would always be less than. Um, so if you're worried about getting to solubility limits, um, as an example, if you think you're going to dissolve a 50 pound bag of salt into a one gallon bucket of water, um, one that's practically the salt will not fit, <laughs> but moreover, that's going to create an extremely high concentration. So you might want to test the solubility of your tracer in water at your field site before you mix the injectate. Now, not only do we have to get the end member mixing right and the solubility right, we're also going to be constrained by our pumps. So manufacturers of pumps um, will design them to have a particular operating rate. Um, this, might, this might vary depending on what size tubing you use in the pump. It might vary by the speed at which you turn the pump. So there may be a maximum rotations per minute or, or RPMs or a minimum RPMs that the pump is designed for. So you want to consider what the manufacturer claims. Um, we're also going to have to think a little bit here about, about um, voltage. And so while we're not going to get into the, the details of how these circuits work, um, 
The general approach is that we've got a battery, typically a 12 volt uh, deep cycle mat marine battery that we carry into the field and we connect it to our pump. Uh, and as that pump is working through the course of the day, it's using electricity from that battery. So the voltage V might do something like this, nice exponential decay. However, for some pumps, the flow rate that they pump will be proportional to the voltage and the most simple circuit. Um, and so it, what this means is uh, as voltage decays through the course of your experiment, your injection flow rate is also going to decay. Now you can overcome this by checking the flow rate of that pump regularly and adjusting your pump accordingly, essentially turning up the RPMs on your pump as voltage drops to try to compensate for it. Um, one other strategy is to use a voltage regulator on your pump. Uh, and the idea here is that even though the battery voltage decays through the day, what a voltage regulator will do is hold that voltage steady. Now on the downside, uh, you cannot achieve the same maximum voltage when you go through that regulator as you might, um, or when you go through many regulators as you might from your pump. Uh, but on the upside, it keeps the flow rate extremely constant. So um, this is what we want, but uh, there is the potential failure. There's a minimum operating voltage at which these regulators will stop to working. Uh, moreover, they add money or cost and complexity, and they use power from your battery to compensate for your battery's power loss. And so you can actually burn through batteries faster when you have that voltage regulator in place. The third consideration is head. Uh, and while we won't do a full fluid mechanics um, definition here, what I want you to think about is the, the level of water in your reservoir. So in reservoir A, well, the tracer level is, is high in the reservoir, the pump only has to lift the fluid one foot vertically before it pumps it to the stream. Late in the day, the condition shown in B, the pump might have to lift fluid from the bottom of your trash can. So vertically lift it three feet prior to releasing it into the stream. Now, what will happen is even if you have the same pump with the same voltage going to it, um, the flow rate in the pump in condition A uh, is going to be larger than in condition B. And I see I have a typo there in my blue, sorry. Flow rate A will be larger than flow rate B. Uh, and the reason is that the pump has less work to do in condition A relative to B. So you can try to compensate for this by having a reservoir that you continuously replenish to keep the water level approximately constant, um, or you can carefully monitor the, volt, the flow rate coming out of your pump and into the stream uh, in order to compensate for this through the course of the day. All of this to say, it's not quite as easy as grabbing a pump and flipping it on. You've got to think about the power for that battery. You've got to think about if you have enough power to last through the course of the day. Do you want to complicate your life by having a voltage regulator? Are you going to need to compensate for the changing head in your reservoir? Um, if you've never done a constant rate injection before, my strongest encouragement is to set up, uh, set up in your lab or in your garage uh, what you think this experiment is going to look like and actually try it. So go out on a Saturday morning, uh, start that pump, measure the flow rate using a volumetric, um, either a volumetric flask or a graduated cylinder and time how long it takes to fill it. And then check back on it a few hours later and record that through the course of the day so you can see just how variable your setup is for only factors that have to do with pump, um, voltage, and head. Okay. We've got to think about end member mixing. We've got to think about solubility. Can our tracer be dissolved in that injectate reservoir? And we've got to think about our pump and its power source, how we get from the injectate reservoir into the stream. Okay. At the end of the day, there is no cookie cutter design for a constant rate injection. Uh, the practical limitations you've got to consider, what's available? So what equipment do you have access to or can you can you borrow? Uh, will you have a situation where there's a reservoir that can be refilled 
throughout the course of the day, or does this all need to stay in one reservoir? Um, is the reservoir going to require mixing? So are you at a limit where uh, a solubility limit or nearing one where precipitates are forming or where your um, tracer is coming back out of solution into its solid form? In that case, you're gonna to need to mix. Now that could be a person standing there with a canoe paddle mixing it, or that could require setting up a separate pump to keep it agitated. Ultimately, we need to have some key data. So however you choose to make this work, uh, you want to know what is the concentration of my inject tape. And while it's great to do that calculation before you go out into the field, it's even better to take the time to collect a few samples of your inject tape, carefully label them, uh, and set those away for subsequent analysis so you can verify that your calculations were correct. We absolutely need to know the injection rate from our pump um, the simplest way to do this is to use a stopwatch and time. So take the tube that is putting the, the injectate into the stream, put it over a graduated cylinder, and uh, calculate how much volume of water is exported by the pump in a given time. So you could either time how long to, how long to pump 100 milliliters or how much volume did I pump in 30 seconds but actual validation of what that flow rate is in the field. Uh, in other words, injectate concentration was our CI and injection rate our QI. So although you've planned it, we definitely want to know what those are in the field. And we want to make those measurements regularly, not just at one time. Um, through the course of the day, voltage may drop, tubing may clog, reactions might happen in your reservoir, um, someone might accidentally kick a wire or damage a connection so that it lowers the voltage, making it to the pump. There are so many things that can go wrong on a constant rate injection. Now, plenty of them have been done quite successfully, and I don't mean to dissuade you from doing this. Um, there are great reasons to do a constant rate injection, um, but it's going to require more planning. It's going to require more complexity in the field, and it's going to require you all keeping track of some additional data throughout the course of the day. <clears throat> the course of the day. Okay, so that's how we're gonna design. Um, once we've got this design together, then um, I'll see you in the next video where we'll talk about how to actually pull this off in the field. All right, thanks everyone.